the phone hardware button, whether or not it was available or not. And you can see here the phone hardware button is, is available for the phone, but not available for desktop. Made sense, and we all use that. And so then we come across that situation, and how do we make it work? Well, the easiest way for us to do that was then to use the pound if, which is basically that directive for the compiler to say, don't include this unless something is true. So in this case, if uh, Windows underscore phone underscore app was defined, which was an automatic uh, definition in uh, Windows phone type applications, then that would be included. And if it, that was false, then the compiler would exclude it. But again, that would result in two binaries, or sometimes three, depending on how you are building your application. And, and where are these, these compiler directives, where, where were these defined? In the, they were in the project properties. So you go to the properties of the two heads. So you'd have a yep. desktop head, and then you'd have a phone head. Each of those would have their own directives defined, and they would be unique. And the important thing to really uh, get from this is that um, what we're doing here is at compile time, we're making a switch between including this bit of code and not this other bit of code. So the compiled output just only had that bit of code that was uh, conditionally included. Right. Now, we don't want that in Windows 10 because we want to create just one binary. So we can't tell the compiler to leave the stuff out and then sometimes leave stuff in. We need everything in at once. That's where we get into our SDKs that we're talking about, how we handle this sort of code. Because it's still going to happen that we'll have capabilities, like Xbox will have certain capabilities that a, a phone won't have, for example. We still want to be able to handle those without making it so now our app won't deploy to that type of device. So there's kind of two things we have to do here, isn't there? So not only do we need to include the, the actual uh, support, programming support for these additional, these additional APIs, yep. we also need to have a way of switching at runtime to say, hey, if you're running on this certain kind of devi device, do this, otherwise, do something else or just don't do this. So we know that we are targeting, we're no longer targeting a version of Windows. Now we're targeting UP UAP, right? The, the version of UAP that we want. And we know that that can extend past many versions of Windows that we want it to. And we also know that UAP is going to be uniform across all the devices. But extension SDKs allows for that default UAP to go a little bit further. And so now I get to take advantage of the capabilities of a device like a scanner, or I get to take advantage of the capabilities of an Xbox like a, a remote control, or maybe just an API that's special for it, like maybe the Avatar API on Xbox. So uh, we use extension APIs to extend UAP, but we also allow it to target specific platforms. And that targeting doesn't spoil the opportunity for it to run on all the different devices. It doesn't mean we have to have multiple binaries anymore. And we'll talk through exactly how that happens. It also enables these SDKs to be released at a cadence that they need to be. If they need to be released more quickly or more slowly, it's sort of up to them. And then we adopt them, but not worry about the underlying UAP. UAP can be at its own, at its own release cadence. Makes sense. OK, so how do we add an, an extension? Well, this is the, uh, the uh, reference manager uh, that we all know and love from Visual Studio. You right click your references folder and say add. Now there's a UAP uh, node on the left that you can expand. And it'll list all the extensions that are available to you on your development uh, device. You may have uh, not installed something, and, you, and so it won't show up here. But this is where you would add it. And so in this case, I have desktop mobile and Xbox that I could choose from. I could pick all those or I could pick a mixture of them. Yeah, and as Microsoft releases more different device families in the future, you'll see that list of extension SDKs growing. I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna be, yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, OK, so let's talk about the extension SDK and kind of the purpose of how everything works. So we have three devices here. We have desktop, mobile, and Xbox. And then this fourth one is everything else, right? Let's just say it keeps on going. And we know the list is long of the types of devices that Windows can run on. Um, all right, so on all of these devices, we know we have the Windows Core. This is the same all the way across, a refactored version of Windows that is a very small subset, but allows for things like universal drivers and universal file I.O. and things like that across everything. So it really is Windows, far more than just the kernel. It's uh, some of the implementations of Windows as well that's been and brought together. And of course, there's more. You know, you run it on desktop, and Windows is going to be far more significant as far as its capabilities than it's going to be on, say, a phone. OK, so then we also have UAP. And UAP is a collection of contracts. And so what's well, a contract exactly? Yeah, so a contract is it's, it's, it's uh, an API surface. It's a collection of APIs exposing 
uh, APIs to, uh, to, to developers. So maybe like the foundational types, that might be one of the uh, yeah. one of the contracts. So now we know all the foundational types will be across all the UAP. So just like Windows Core is the same across all the devices, UAP, the default UAP, is also the same across yeah. all the devices. So, yeah, the UAP is the converged API surface that's going to be available across all our Windows 10 uh, devices. Now, I might write an application here for desktop, and I want to extend it and use some of those extra capabilities that a desktop has. I may want to write an application for mobile and extend it and use some of those capabilities that a mobile that mobile gives me. Same thing with Xbox. And so each of those then has an extension SDK that I can use. And so as I write for desktop, I just start, I reference and then start using that SDK. Now what's interesting though is when I'm running on desktop, I get all that capability, but what happens when I'm running on mobile, what happens when I'm running on Xbox and try and use those same things? Well, the neat part is there are some stubs that I get out of the box. So as soon as I make a reference to that SDK, the entire API surface flows with my app no matter what. So that means that even though I'm trying to interact with desktop APIs, but I'm running on an Xbox, I can still start referencing those APIs, referencing those using statements and namespaces, and not worry about having to build multiple binaries. Now, it doesn't mean calling those will actually do anything, though, because sometimes calling them will actually result in an error. And so we want to make sure we can sniff for those and make sure we don't call those. Uh, we don't want to call a mobile API when we're on an Xbox, for so, example. So I guess the, the stubbed out APIs on, say, we've, you've installed the mobile extension SDK, you get the kind of the real implementation of that goes to mobile devices. And on all the others, it's stubbed out. Yeah. It, but that, that at least allows us to compile that package. Yeah. But then, of course, if you inadvertently try and call the mobile uh, method, yep. on a desktop, you'll get an exception. That's run, exactly run right. Runtime exception. Yeah. So this is, a, this is how we can test for those capabilities. And that's really the responsibility of the developer. Because as soon as I make a reference to the Xbox API and start writing to it, I have to test to make sure I'm on an Xbox before I start interacting with that. So uh, inside API information, this is a, a, a call that I can make. There's a whole bunch of tests that I can do. Perhaps the most common is going to be, is type present? And that type really represents just a namespace. Is this namespace present or not or implemented on the device that it's currently running on? And so we'll look more specifically on how that's used. But what we'll do is we'll wrap things um, inside an if statement that uses this method that returns a Boolean back to us. So for example, if Windows Phone UI hardware button, so this is a typical back button on a, on a device, um, I want to write logic around that, but I don't want that logic to break whenever I'm running on my desktop. So I wrap it around API information. This is completely different than a pound if, by the way, because a pound if would, it would completely remove this from the binary when it compiles, and that's not what we want, because then we have to put it into some binary. Now we have two binaries. Which one do we ship? That's not what we want. We want one, and so this allows us to get past that limitation and make it so we have a single binary, just like you said, calling to the stub so it builds, but only working when it actually is implemented on that device. Okay. It's not the API's responsibility. Once you include Xbox, once you include mobile, once you include um, uh, desktop or anything else that's out there, it, it's up to me now as the developer. I created this. I am implementing it. I also am going to be the one that tests to make sure that these capabilities are there before I, I use it. And another example of a capability might be scanner. I can include some of the SDKs that maybe give me all kinds of complex scanner capabilities, but I can't I can't use those if there's no scanner hooked up. So another thing I can do is to test to see whether or not there's a scanner as well. So it's not just is it mobile, it's not just is it Xbox, it also has to do with the capabilities of just this device, which means your application running on Windows desktop may have two different functional uh, forks. One that says when there's a scanner, I do this. One that says when there's no scanner, I do this. Right? And so it's up to the developer to understand the workflow of their application and write it accordingly. Now, what about the shared project? Back with Windows 8.1, that's where it was. Yep. Windows 8.1, we had the shared project. And the shared project allowed us to have two heads and a shared between. That basically, through MS Build, would bring those up. We would be able to use those compiler directives. We could still use compiler directives, but every time we introduce a directive, just know it also introduces an extra binary. So but can you still do that? Yeah. Absolutely, you can. Sometimes it's the right thing to do to have multiple binaries, because you isolate the work that you're doing. Sometimes it's not. No, that's right. I, I just want to say that you know, there's a lot of confusion about a shared project, because a shared project looks like a project like your heads do, but mm -hmm. there's no compiled output from a shared project. 
So it, it's, anything that's in a shared project is just kind of block copied up into the projects that reference it. So that's really why it happens at compile time. It's why the pound if has the effect that it has on what ends up in the, in the uh, compiled output of whatever parent project is referencing that shared project. A, a, a realistic scenario of why you might have a shared project in a Windows 10 scenario would be that you're maintaining your Windows 8 project as well, and so you keep a shared between them. Then you would have that pound if. The pound if has nothing really to do with capability testing, however. You still need to sniff to see whether or not you can use the SDKs that are in, I guess, effectively your Windows 10 head. Well, yeah, effectively what you're going to end you could end up, if you've got a shared project and shared between a UAP and Windows Phone 8, uni, Windows, and a Windows 8.1 universal, you're going to have pound if Windows Phone yeah. app do this, and it's, that's 8.1 phone specific. Ha hash elif. Windows app, which means do the 8.1 Windows mobile, uh, Windows desktop specific, then you guys have hash L, else if <laughs> Windows UAP. This is why people didn't like pound if, no, right? No, because that's it right. It kind of gets blood, yeah. yeah. And you start throwing other things. Still fully supported. It's oh, yeah. always been there, right? It's, you it's could always tool. have these. It's just a tool, and uh, it that's works right. for you. If it works for you, use it. All things in moderation, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so let me, uh, let's, let me show you a demo uh, using the API information, kind of laying it out. And I'll I'll talk about kind of where we get some of the numbers and things like that as well. All right, the um, inside Visual Studio here. Let me just create a brand new project. So this is going to be a blank UAP project, and this is Visual Studio 2015 still preview, right? And so things have changed. And so you can see right out of the bat, I have I'm targeting UAP. Not there's no version of Windows that I'm targeting, but see that 10.0.0.9927. Where does that come from? Well, if we go into program files, into Windows SDK, we can see where the platforms are actually defined. So we, I'm only, only going to have one platform here, the UAP platform, in which version? Only this 10.0.0.9927. So that's where this number is coming from. And it pulls exactly from this file. It's, a, it's, a, it's just an XML file. And you can see that it is defining UAP as these three contracts. So, where do these contracts come from? In this case, it's foundation contract. These are just WinMD files, and you can see the version specific as well. So the next version of UAP may include another one or may include the same one, but a different version. But it allows me to target specifically and trust that I'm going to get all of the um, all the functionality I know. So here, look, in the references folder, here's 1000, that's the version of this WinMD file that makes up the foundation contract. Again, this is just an exposed API. Yeah. Anyway, so that's where UAP comes from. It's defined for me. Um, now, let's, let me unload the project and go into the project file. I could do this through the UI, but I want to really describe it. And so I want to create a reference to an external um, SDK. So in this case, it's going to be Windows Mobile. And so I'm going to include it. And when I do include this external library, I, I have to specify the version. But how do I know the version? Well, I look to see where all the extensions are. And so right next to th that same folder are the extension SDKs. I have two of them installed today, Windows Desktop and Windows Mobile. And if I open up Windows Mobile, I can see the one that I have installed, it could be many installed, by the way, is uh, 10 one right? So I just say the version I want is 10 one These are instructions then to Visual Studio, which knows how to spelunk through those folders and get the right, um, get the right uh, manifest. So now I have that reference right inside my references folder. I, you can see Windows Mobile. I could have added Windows Desktop because those are the only two extensions that I have, so I couldn't do it. There is a UI for that as well, but fundamentally that's what's going on and edit to the, uh, the proj file. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, let's try something out. I'll show you how to use uh, one of these uh, namespaces and cause a problem here. So here's a quick button, and whenever I click on this button, what I want to happen is I want to use the mobile SDK, which has a namespace of Windows, .phone, and then dot, uh, UI dot .input hardware buttons. And so this is where I can get the back pressed event and handle whenever the user clicks on the hardware or even the soft button, actually, on phone. And so um, I won't, just to make it so it doesn't throw it, I'll just make a quick break statement right here. OK, so this is great whenever I'm running on the phone, but I'm actually going to be running this on the desktop. So let me put a, uh, let, me put the, let me run this, I mean, in the local machine here, and we'll just see what happens when I click on this button. So here we go. There's the button. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. 
and it's going to throw an exception. And the reason it throws the exception is because this is not implemented on the desktop. All I have is that stub. And so the stub is throwing a uh, runtime exception of a type load exception, right, saying that it's not registered. And it's really not. I need some way to include this in the binary, but exclude it when it's running on the desktop. And we can go back to that app API that we did before. And so remember, what we're going to test is the namespace. So let me just move that into a string so we can test for that namespace. And so the, uh, the, uh, the place for, to test all this, this is windows.foundation.metadata.appinfo, yeah, app information dot is type present. So you see all the is methods. There's so many of them. Is type present. And then all it takes is a string. That's the namespace that I want. And uh, I'll make this nice and clean and wrap it inside a little if statement for us. There we go. And uh, there. So now, when I run this on the desktop, I'll just try it again. When I run this on the desktop, we'll see that the if statement will evaluate it and skip right over that line and not give me an exception. So I'll go ahead and run it. You can see my breakpoint hits here. And if I go next, it'll give me a false and allow it to skip right over this so that it goes pass this and I don't get the error. So I leave my logic. Everything is implemented the same the way I would want it. I leave my, um, <clears throat> I leave all the SDKs referenced the way I want to and I've bypassed the error caused by what if it runs on a device that doesn't have that supported API. So this is using API information and it's far superior than pound if because it allows me to keep everything in a single binary and deploy to every device. And again, I would have all kinds of tests like this depending on the functionality and the types of um, functionality in those extension SDKs that I ended up wanting to use. You know, as much of those SDKs I use, I sniffed to make sure